It was my pleasure to serve as uh, Lawton Child's Lieutenant Governor for eight years. I don't think it should be overlooked, however, that I also served as Reuben Askew's Lieutenant for eight years, and I served as Bob Graham's Lieutenant for eight years. Anyone who's been in the legislature and understands uh, what it's like to be uh, a floor manager understands that you're not independent, you are a lieutenant. So I'm one of the longest serving lieutenants uh, in Florida history. inland waterways will soon circle the state. Two cross-state canals connect the Gulf and Atlantic Ocean, one through Lake Okeechobee, and to the north under construction is the Cross Florida Barge Canal, which will cut two days off present shipping time from Gulf to Ocean. Great economic development will follow along this canal route. Now, Mr. George Dooley, President and General Manager for WPBT Miami, Florida. We believe that public television should provide an alternative service to commercial television. On October 28, 1970, WPBT Channel 2 in Miami made such a service available to each voter and citizen in the state of Florida. Our entry is a one-hour excerpted version of a four-hour and 23-minute broadcast which had as its purpose to bring the candidates to the voter with a description of the office. An invited audience from all areas of the state of Florida has assembled here in the Miami Beach Auditorium for a four-hour radio and television special, which is being broadcast live throughout the state of Florida. The political candidates for every statewide office have been arriving to participate in the first broadcast of its kind in television history. And the program is about to begin. WPBT Miami is proud to present a special production for the Department of Education of the State of Florida, Politathon 70. And now we turn to the Democratic candidate for the office of United States Senator, 
State Senator Lawton Childs. Lawton Childs graduated from the University of Florida School of Law in 1955 and served as an officer in the United States Army in Korea. He was a member of the Florida House of Representatives from 1959 to 1966, became a member of the Florida Senate in 1966. He's been chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, chairman of the Appropriations Subcommittee, and chairman of the Legislative Staff Intern Sponsoring Committee, and has served on various other committees. Senator Childs, I think you are familiar with the fact of a changed format. Otherwise, the standards which were established earlier in the month are, and agreed upon are abiding. You will have two months, two, two months for an opening statement. How would you like two months for an opening statement? <laughs> two minutes for an opening statement on what you consider to be the issues of this important race, what particular qualifications you feel you have, why anyone would particularly vote for you over your opponent, or, as a matter of fact, anything you might have in your mind. Uh, all of the candidates have agreed to the rules of procedure in order to ensure equal time. When you hear this sound, means that your time is up, sir. Please finish your sentence within about 10 seconds after you hear that signal. If you exceed the time limits, I will have to interrupt. Now, if you would like to, sir, please proceed with your opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Daly. I'm delighted to, to have you in Florida participating with us on this program. I wish you had a blackboard in here. I'd feel more at ease if I could sign in on a blackboard. I uh, do appreciate the opportunity for this program. I had the opportunity of voting uh, on the appropriation for this in the legislature. I think this offers a hope uh, in trying to get candidates before the people again. Uh, we used to have rallies, uh, and we used to have candidates before the people, but that's been hard to do. Uh, why do I want to run for the United States Senate? I think that's a, a good question. Uh, I've been interested in politics and public service since I was 10 years old. I worked in the first governor's race when I was 10. I went to Boys State and served as a member of the American Legion Boys State and the Boys State Legislature. I made up my mind then that I wanted to run for the legislature, and as soon as I got out of uh, law school, I ran uh, in 1958. My wife went down one side of the street and I went down the other, and for three months, from daylight to dark, we knocked on doors and I got elected. The nice thing about it, that election was I didn't ever feel like I owed any person uh, other than the people uh, because they were the ones that elected me. There was no Mr. Big. Uh, the United States Senate uh, is the organization, uh, 100 men, they say, the most exclusive club in the world. I think it's the one place where one man could have more to do with to change the course of history of this country and perhaps the nation uh, than any place in the world. So that would certainly be the highest aspiration that a man could have. I've had uh, the distinct opportunity to offer myself for this job and in connection with that to uh, walk across this state trying to get acquainted with people and what started off to be a way of getting an identity. It turned out to be an education for me. Uh, I spent 92 days. I filled nine notebooks with the comments that people gave me. I think I know more about this state, its problems, than any man running. I think I can do a job for this state as a United States Senator. In less than an hour, it will all be over. Election 70 turned out to be one of the most bitter off-year political struggles in history, both around the nation and around the state. Democrats are fearful they'll be blamed for increased disruption and violence. Republicans fear a backlash from soaring inflation and unemployment. Here in Dade County and around the state, voter response was intense. A heavy turnout began as the polls opened, and a steady stream of voters kept poll workers busy throughout the day. By midday, it became evident that a record was going to be set. A late afternoon check by Dade County Election Supervisor Martin Braderman shows that some 207,000 voters have cast their ballots, compared with 171,000 in the election of 1966. Indications are that some 64% of those registered to vote in Dade will go to the polls. One reason, perhaps, is that the voters are fighting mad. Many are disgruntled with Florida politics. How would you uh, characterize this election? Well, I think the last couple of days have been very vicious and uh, unfair in many respects because it doesn't give the other candidate chance to reply to charges made. I think the campaign uh, between Slade and O'Malley got a little rough, but I don't think uh, the rest of it was anything beyond the kind of politics we're normally used to seeing. Well, I think it's been very good. I've been well informed, much better informed this year than I've ever been. Nobody ever touched on the issues. It was all slogans and uh, smear campaigns, and you never really had a, a good idea um, uh, why you were voting for somebody as far as the issues went. 
I said, I would love to see a clean campaign for election one year before I die. But yes, it is just about over. The polls will soon close, and the people again will have chosen their leaders. For Dade County, a runoff election still remains for mayor and county commissioner, but for almost all the other races, the voters and news correspondents will have a long rest. WTBJ Miami, South Florida's largest daily circulation. The Ralph Rennick Report with Bob Mayer, Harry K. Smith in Fort Lauderdale, and Bob Gallagher. Now here's Ralph Rennick. Good evening, everybody. While the day's mayor's race continues, most other contests have been decided, and the candidates are now either contemplating their defeat or celebrating their victory. Channel 4's Bob Mayer reports. Senator, I said it was a brisk morning. I think it might be downright cold. I notice you've got a sweater on. Yes, sir. Uh, a little bit too cool for shirt sleeves this morning. I left Lakeland this morning about 5 o'clock, and it was awful cold when I left there. Senator, how hard is it going to be to fulfill your campaign promise of returning to Florida one week in four? Well, I, I don't know how hard it's going to be. It's just like when you make a commitment, you're going to do something, you do it. It, uh, it wasn't easy to walk the state. <laughs> Uh, it wasn't easy to uh, campaign, you know, for 18 months. Uh, I just think that uh, representative government, that's what it's all about. You have to know what the people want and what they're thinking, and you have to go back and report to them what you're doing. What will you do during those periods? Will you walk again? Well, I hope to, uh, to do some walking. Of course, not just between towns because you won't see enough people. I want to try to go where I can find people. And, and where I can be available to people so that they can, you know, they can find me and they can talk to me. I found that the great frustration with people is they always say that, you know, after a guy's elected, they never see him again until he comes around. So uh, I want to try to change that. And so I want to be where available to where people can find me. What's going to be your first priority as a United States Senator? Well, of course, the first priority is, uh, you know, getting ready to get up there. I, uh, I have a... A strong feeling of trying to do something to return some of the money and power back to state and local government. How would you answer those that say you were elected by a gimmick? Well, uh, I think uh, all campaigning, you know, is a way of trying to go to the people. Uh, television or spending a million dollars is a gimmick. Uh, having the slick uh, actors is a gimmick. And if uh, going to see the people is a gimmick, then uh, I'm all for it. Thank you very much, Senator-elect Lawton Childs. It's been said that a journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. Certainly, Senator-elect Childs could not disagree. Bob Mayer, Channel 4 News. This is the University of Florida Video Yearbook for 1988-89. University leaders, friends, and alumni continued to push the capital fundraising campaign toward its $250 million goal. The kickoff dinner in the fall was emceed by alumnus and ABC anchorman Forrest Sawyer. A generous response from the faithful brought the total to more than $200 million by year's end, keyed by the late spring announcement of a $10 million gift from citrus producer and cattleman Ben Hill Griffin. As a gesture of thanks, the university and the Florida legislature named the football stadium at Florida Field in his honor. The winds of politics blew strong across campus in the fall term as Florida Blue Key presented the first statewide televised debate involving both the Republican and Democratic candidates for the U.S. Senate. The program was hailed as a success, even though it was bypassed by Republican frontrunner Connie Mack, who later would defeat Ocala Congressman Buddy McKay for the seat. The man who created the opening by stepping aside after three terms in the Senate Lawton Child returned to his alma mater to fill a chaired professorship in political science and lecture budding politicians on the ways and means of government. You know, I'm kind of excited about it. Uh, it's, I think it's going to be, be fun. I, uh, they're nervous about today. I'm a little nervous myself, you know. I try to keep ahead of them, you know, and, and make it where it will be interesting. So the subject came, would come up that you need to run for mayor, and Mayor Pohl said he's not running for re-election, and so I said, how am I going to run for mayor when 
I've got to be here every day, you know, lunch and dinner. And it, this went on for months and months and months, and finally, uh, I don't know, I think it was maybe October of uh, 78. I know it was the fall of 78, either October or November. I said, all right, I'll do it. And that's sort of how it happened. I no talking to anybody else, no polling, no calling a whole bunch of people should I do it or not. I said, all right, I'll do it. And which is kind of what I did for governor, the same thing. Um, Florida has what they, back then, what they call a weak form of governor. You had six elected cabinet members and the governor and a lot of agencies answered to them, not to the governor. And I'd like to start out talking just for a moment about the campaigns, because that's part of it. Uh, this is a different state to govern. It's a different state to campaign in. It's also a very fun place, uh, and the campaigns always come up with funny war stories. Working with Lawton Childs was very different. I see many people in the room today who worked with Lawton, and they understand exactly what I'm saying. You never knew what was going to happen. Uh, it was always funny, and there were usually surprise endings. Uh, word had gotten out uh, that we were thinking of running together. Lawton Childs had been in retirement for two years. Uh, we had not announced. We had not really planned the campaign. We were not sure we were going to start running. And contributions started pouring in. Checks all the way from $1, $2 all the way up to Lawton's limit of $100. We had no uh, headquarters, we had no mailbox, we had no uh, campaign, no campaign manager, uh, and no phones. Our opponents immediately figured out that we had a problem. And so checks started coming in that were made payable to Fido Smith. Uh, or were from Fido Smith, and it said Occupation Dog. And, uh, and there was one from Tweedy uh, Jones, Occupation Canary. Uh, there was one from Buster Brown, Occupation Kindergarten. Uh, we didn't have a campaign manager, we didn't have a campaign, so we got a volunteer committee, and they started posting these checks, uh, making records, and, putting them in the bank. The law required they be put in the bank within 24 hours. Um, the press got a hold of this and was having a field day, so we uh, had a committee meeting and we decided we'd put together another committee, so we put together another volunteer committee to send back the illegal checks, and they developed a form letter. It said, uh, Dear Fido, Thank you for your contribution, but we must send it back. It appears that you're a dog. <laughs> Sincerely, Charles and McKay. P.S. If you're not a dog, please send the money back. <laughs> it brings back a lot of memories. For seven years, I taught in a classroom like this one. As a teacher and parent, I learned a lot about what our schools need. As governor, I've boosted our state's investment in education 56% in the past four years. But money alone won't give us the schools our children deserve. That's why I'm fighting for more parental power and choice in our classrooms. After all, there's still a lot of old teacher in me. Newspapers across Florida agree Bob Martinez has been a serious disappointment. He led the charge for the biggest tax increase in our history. He has taken money from every lobbyist, PAC, or contractor that would give. He owes his political career to the special interests. But Lawton Childs is free to serve the people's interests. Childs has fought to protect Social Security and Medicare. He wants to make government smaller and smarter. Childs will provide strong, effective leadership. His name is synonymous with fiscal responsibility. His wisdom, strength, and compassion commend him for Florida's highest office. You know, I have family in Florida, so I care about who's elected governor. And Bob Martinez is a man I trust. He created Florida's drug-free school zones. Wasn't that a good idea? 
and he's got the strength and the energy a governor needs to fight crime and drugs. I can't vote for Bob Martinez, but I wish I could, and I hope you will. He's a good man and a good governor. And then we didn't have a campaign headquarters, so a, a uh, Republican uh, Chevrolet dealer in Tallahassee, Bill Thomas, who was upset with uh, Governor Martinez about the services tax, gave us this almost new facility that he was moving out uh, for an even bigger facility. Ideal. So we moved in without asking any questions. And then it turned out he had not told us the exact whole story. There was this problem that his used car operation was still there. So we had a campaign uh, going on uh, in the same place uh, where they were selling used Chevrolets. Um, we didn't have any phones, so we were using the Bill Thomas Chevrolet phones. And they were ringing, uh, and the people were saying, Bill, answer line six. Bill, answer line six. Well, if we didn't have any volunteers named Bill, uh, the phone would be answered, Thomas Chevrolet. And the people would say, well, what is Thomas Chevrolet's position on thong bathing suit? And uh, whoever it was would give a position. So we didn't, we didn't have an organization. We didn't have a campaign. We didn't have any positions. Uh, and that's, that's what was going on. I, I uh, brought in a political editor uh, who is in the room today and had him tour the operation with us. And he said, this is absolute sheer genius. You have thrown everybody off track. Now you've got to tell me where is the real headquarters. Now on to the gubernatorial races this morning. The Republicans have won the biggest battle, but apparently they have lost the war. The biggest battle was in California, where Republican Senator Pete Wilson has defeated former San Francisco Mayor Dianne Feinstein. But overall, the Democrats won two more governor's mansions than they lost in the 90 vote. ABC's Mike Von Frem with the State House story. To the surprise of pollsters, the Florida race wasn't even close. Democrat Lawton Childs, the former senator, easily beat Republican incumbent Bob Martinez, who angered many Florida voters when he tried to raise taxes and restrict abortion rights. I think that uh, ultimately just people decided that they wanted, uh, you know, new leadership, that they weren't happy with the state the way it was. When I got down with almost 20 years of public life, I came home and picked up where I had left off before in your public life. I uh, want to uh, raise this question. You might call this the revised standard version of the question of governing Florida. And this is a question that was raised by Florida Trend Magazine one time in the middle of our uh, first term, and that is, is Florida governable? I'm not talking about principles, I'm talking about practicalities. Florida is the improbable joinder of the south end of Appalachia with the north end of the 22nd cent century. Orlando's right at the dividing lines. Within 50 miles of here, there are counties that look exactly like Arkansas, Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, Louisiana. No jobs, no growth, no earthly idea of what to do. And the growth policy for young people in that part of Florida is move out. The former Governor Lawton Childs announced his intentions today to follow in his father's footsteps. Bud Childs is running for Florida governor, but not as a Democrat. As Whitney Ray tells us, he is breaking from the party of his father and running as an independent. A painting of Lawton Childs hangs in the Capitol hallway, a reminder of his two terms as governor of Florida. Now his son Bud Childs hopes his picture will hang near his father's. I'm here this morning to announce for governor. Bud is breaking from his father's party to run for governor as an independent. My father didn't raise me to have values that about keeping faith with the Democratic Party. He raised me to have values to keep faith with people. And now his entrance into the governor's race could hurt Democratic frontrunner Alex Sink. 
The three-way race could cost Sink more votes than Republican candidate Bill McCollum. Still, Sink is shrugging off her new opponent. And I'm going to be uh, running my own campaign regardless of who else is in it. But McCollum plans to play Sink and Childs against each other. It's interesting that he's decided to run as a nonpartisan because he's clearly a Democrat. Childs is entering the race late and is trailing by millions in fundraising. Still, Childs says he won't take any money from lobbyists, political action groups, or big donors. In Tallahassee, Whitney Ray, WPTV News Channel 5. So what is it like to govern the state of Florida? You've got to be ready to move. You've got to be ready to change uh, when the wind changes. And you've got to understand this is not a single state. It can't be dealt with as a single state. It's got to be dealt with fairly for all the people, old timers, newcomers, regardless of what country they have come from. One final word about Lawton Childs, and I think this is very important. There's a risk that all of the colorful stories about Governor Childs will lead people to the conclusion that he was not a substantive person, not a substantive leader. Lawton Childs was one of the great leaders in the history of this state and really in the history of this country. Is this the kind of leadership uh, that you're going to get? Governor, I have, I'm glad that you sicked your private detectives on me and joined the list of probably every major newspaper. They crossed with your private detectives, you know. They you, No, I don't have any. <laughs> Checking your occupational license tax. You paid $75,000 for it. I don't have private detectives checking occupational license taxes. Oh, well, I don't know what your detectives check. Will you you let know, me we'll find that out. Yeah. <laughs> Will you let me answer the question? Bush. Thank you. Governor. I have made all of the obligations that, um, as a businessman, I was required to make. Uh, I am a millionaire, I guess, and so are you. Now, I've done it working in the private sector. I came to Florida in 1980 to pursue my dreams. My partner, Armando Cudina, and I built a business from the ground up. Three people. Today, that business has 160 people. Unlike government that just kind of grows and grows and grows, we had ups and downs. The real world is that way. Uh, you haven't been in the real world. You haven't been in the private sector to know what it's like. But let me tell you, it is difficult because of the burdens of regulation. It is difficult because of the expanse of government. I, uh... There's another country saying that we have in Florida, a cut dog barks. Uh, you know, I, uh, I'll have to tell you, uh, from your standpoint, it is all right uh, for you to characterize uh, Buddy and I as uh, ultra-liberals, people that don't care about crime, coddled criminals, uh, have a health program uh, that verges uh, on uh, virtually uh, socialism uh, in the health program. You know, I want to tell you, those words offend me as much as anything in the world I could say uh, about you now but we are talking about who is going to lead this state we are talking about judgment and we are talking about leadership and you did talk about this wonderful money that you had assessed uh, you know at some stage uh, Armando was not the only partner you had um, if you want to continue to spend money to investigate all these things that's fine that's part of the process I guess but I've answered your question. Uh, I have paid my taxes. I have paid my dues. I've done it in the private sector. I haven't done it with the advantage of being in public life, but, uh, you know, we all can't be in public life and become millionaires, I guess. Well, now, as we don't have notes, and you can say that Buddy and I made our money by being in public life, you know, did it help at all to be the son of the president? 